Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Stacia. Uh, so since the last episode, I have been doing a little bit of work around the base, uh, basically just plugging up a lot of A2 stuff. Uh, you can see our storage over here has been drastically reduced uh, to just a few little things. This is all stuff I have to set up in the last storage room uh, over there, which I'm going to be getting that set up here shortly. Over here, I have a few machine frames. We're going to go ahead. Oh, yeah, the pink slime. I'm going to grab that here in just a moment. Um, and I did run cables over. Uh, you can see right here, uh, this is the line that has our storage. And it runs over to about right here and then right. And, of course, over to those ingots that we set up last episode. But right here, it's going to come through another storage bus interface combination. And it's going to head up. And we're going to take a look at that here in just a moment. Uh, and then I have a second line, because uh, this is kind of how we have to run it at the moment, until we get dense cable and, and a controller. Uh, and I've got a second line here that comes out the back of the energy acceptor and runs around. And it's going to head up as well. And we're going to be making use of that today. But you can see it heads up the side of the building here up to here. Uh, and up here, I've ran these cables down along through here and along uh, right down here now just bear in mind that this can only support eight channels so we're going to be kind of picking and choosing today what we plug up and then once we get dense cable and a controller uh, then we'll just plug up everything um, but for right now we have to be a little bit picky and choosy as to what we what we plug up and then over here uh, this is where the other cable ran up I did go ahead and I set up cable facades on one end I've got to make some more of those uh, but this runs up and then runs over to here where this colossal chest is and you can see uh, a lot of our stuff is stored away into this and then that gives us basically access to all of that within our AE2 uh, terminals and like I said that's most everything is now plugged up uh, and so you can see here we have access to lots of things uh, and our our metals area is also plugged up now uh, completely so uh, we kind of have this I've got two by two drawers for a lot of our alloys and just kind of miscellaneous little things stuff that won't go into storage drawers or compacting drawers as well as a lot of our 82 components and uh, we'll have our power components also redstone coal aquamarine shell because we may not process those um, we'll probably add a few more things to that as well uh, but we're just going to store those ores away in case we need them and there is void upgrades in that so uh, that way it can kind of make room for the ores that we're actually going to need all right now what i want to do first and foremost uh, i know i've got some pink slime i know i made some up i just don't know how much i've got uh, we've got four here that'll be enough to get us started and then we can plug up pink slime. I really don't like making pink slime by hand because I have to just keep placing in iron and I have to keep placing in gold. Uh, so I didn't make a ton of it just because I hated waiting for it. Uh, but there is a few ME interfaces. Now we're also going to need to set up crafting uh, units for uh, today uh, so we can actually start ordering crafts and stuff. Um, I'm not for sure. I think it's just, yeah, just default. And that so that's actually pretty cheap let's go ahead and do that um we're gonna go ahead and just make i guess a single crafting unit for the time being um, and then we'll expand on that uh now i don't know let's see let's go ahead and get ourselves Let's see, the 16K takes three 4Ks, and 4K takes three 1K is perfect. Uh, so nine would get us a single 16K. Um, honestly, I mean, I've probably got enough. Let's see if we can go for a single 64K. Okay, so there's all the 1Ks that we're going to need. Now the 4Ks... Uh, what do we need here? Quartz glass. I've got some of that. I may have to make some processors, but realistically this isn't uh, too bad for us. So we'll get nine of these. There we go. And I'm going to hold on to that. I don't, I want to set up a storage place for that. 
By the way, is there a quest for these at all? There is, but they're behind the ME drive. So, yeah. We'll get to that, but I really don't want to have to manually craft. It's really not that expensive, but I don't want to have to manually craft all of it. And we'll be making more of these uh, storage components. And then we're going to go for our three. Uh, whoops, that in the middle of quartz. So, three of those. And then we'll get our single 64K. So, not too bad. Not too bad to pull that off. And then if we take that, we combine it with our crafting unit. There we go, we got a 64K crafting storage. All right. Uh, now this, we're gonna go ahead, it doesn't really matter where this is plugged up to uh, right now. Um, so we're probably just gonna put it right there. There we go. Devices online. So now we can actually order auto crafting uh, up to 64, uh, 64,000 bits. Um, worth but right now we only have one crafting unit so we can only craft like one thing at a time and we can add crafting co-processing so that we could do sequences we will get to that i don't know what they take in this pack molecular assemblers are cheap we'll probably get into those a little bit today um, crafting co-processing is just engineering processors so all of this is really really cheap um, and honestly after coming off the costs that we had to do the last couple episodes uh, Honestly, even making 64 K's are super cheap uh, Because of course glowstone redstone all free sardis We've got a lot of the ore so it's kind of an obsolete point uh, Though I do want to get auto processing set up because I'm starting to run out of iron and stuff like that I'm having to uh, kind of manually do this which <laughs> isn't great so we do need to get oil processing set up pretty quick so now what i want to do is we've got our interfaces let's get ourselves some patterns uh, so these take quartz enriched iron oh that's kind of icky uh, as well as basic coils which is kind of whatever uh, enriched gold and they do make one at a time Ugh. and we can't use pure sardis for that so that's kind of unfortunate so in that case, we're going to need to actually set up for some sludge. Now, is the only way to produce this through the plant gatherer? It appears to be. Um, either that or maybe RF tools dimension. Um, we could do that as well. But uh, let me set this to JEI synchronized to make our lives a little bit easier. Uh, so the plant gatherer. Okay, so there's our plant gatherer. So let's go ahead and grab that. And let's also go ahead and get ourselves an ender sail. Uh, and then let's get some ender tanks also. Uh, I've got one here. And we just need wool and obsidian. It's because I don't have the block storage built yet. Mainly because I just wanted to go ahead and dive into this. Um, because it's just going to make our lives a bit easier. And then let me go ahead and just get two diamonds. Then we'll figure out a color for this. All right, I think we're gonna go purple, black, purple. So just like that. And we're gonna use our fluid encapsulator from before. And by the end of things, we're gonna need a few of these, but I think this is gonna be more important for us as far as getting A2 progressed uh, than making more life right, because I don't think we're gonna need this for anything related to A2. And so at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this one up uh, and let's also go ahead and just grab Theus for the time being. Because I think most of our fluid encapsulators, I'm going to want these set up for automatic production and not uh, not have them as on order automation. Now, Lytherite is something we're not going to use for very long at all anyways. Uh, just enough to get into environmental tech. And then we'll be able to get Lytherite kind of just passively. But, uh, so I think we're going to use this fluid encapsulator for now for sludge. And let's go ahead and get ourselves a block placer as well. Um, I think that will be good for what I have in mind for this. Because I don't really need this thing for farming because we have this. You know, the sylph handles all of our farming and keeps us stocked on things. Uh, so I think what we're going to do 
is we're going to set it up just over in here and that way I can just kind of plug into this drawer network. Uh, we're going to put in, let's open this up just a little bit. Let's take and put cobblestone, cobblestone, and on top of that we're just going to put in sand. It doesn't have to be sand of course, but um, go with grass, but eh. yeah, let's actually just go with dirt for this. And then right here, we're going to open this up, we're going to open this up, and then let's go ahead and put a block placer in and rotate that, and then we're going to put a plant gatherer in right here. Put that back. I may actually bring that out just a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in a item pipe, basic logistical transporter. Uh, basic one should be fine because it's not going to have to move really, really fast or anything. And we're going to go ahead and just have that attach onto the plant gatherer, like so. And then what we're going to do is let's take our energy cables. We're just going to run these along the bottom because they can be waterlogged. So we're going to do that. Uh, and then we're going to... Uh, let's bring these up to here and we'll go ahead and attach our in ender cell right there um, and I don't need this connection here um, and then the plant gatherer feeds over into there that's good and then we're gonna have a basic mechanical pipe and I think instead of having the ender tank, I don't know. Do we want to do the ender tank? Well, let's go ahead and plug this up. So what we're going to do is we're going to have the block placer and we're going to throw in some sugar cane and it's going to place it. Okay, I just discovered that we can't do this without unloading the chunks uh, because the block placer cannot place within a loaded chunk. Um, let me, let me say there should be a workaround, but you can see right now it's placing oak logs and then the plant gatherer is breaking those and we're getting sludge just passively. Now we can speed all this up with speed upgrades, but we've got to basically set it up so that industrial foregoing can bypass chunk claims. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go here to the F2B chunks and let me just go ahead and claim this back. And we're gonna go to allies. Let's just scroll down to, this is industrial foregoing and we're gonna allow that. So we should say, once this block placer runs down, there we go, it places it, and the plant gatherer grabs it. Perfect. Okay, so this is building up with some sludge just passively. We're going to throw some speed upgrades in this here soon. I have to speed up this whole process because then it's going to be like pop, 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 and it's just going to be constant. Um, and that way we just have constant sludge coming in. Um, no, I think I'd rather actually do the ender tank method just to kind of keep it clean um, I don't know that we're really going to use sludge for anything else but I think that this will work better so we're going to put the ender tank back here and we're going to say uh, sludge make sure that's all yeah that's all configured right say so sludge okay it's going to be the front looks like there we go it's going to start pushing that uh, into the ender tank and then what we can do is just come up and set this up pretty much anywhere. Um, I think what we're going to do is our fluid encapsulators, they're going to be set up in an area uh, kind of to where we can have them just kind of automatically creating our stuff for us. So this is going to be some of our automatic systems and stuff because uh, I think yeah, we'll be able to have a single drawer controller cover all of this uh, and manage it for us. So we'll say right in here is going to be our fluid encapsulator, uh, just sitting right there, and then we'll put the other ender tank here. Uh, let's say configuration, you can insert from the bottom, go ahead and turn that, and that way sludge can get pumped into this. And we'll say that you can output out the top, and then we're going to need to feed this some power as well as we'll have some uh, AE2 connection so that it can feed items in. So we'll do that and we'll do those down the side. So we'll do like two, 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 and so on. 
and we'll just put the ender cell in uh, on the back side of this and that way we can just run power down and along through there and then to get our refined iron or uh, enriched iron quartz enriched that's going to be just mana quartz 250 millibuckets of sludge and mana quartz and honestly I might even uh, make a tank for this And we'll say auto input is enabled. Uh, and then what we'll do is we'll just set up the jumbo tank there. And behind that we'll put in the ender tank. So there we go. Okay, and then we can throw in our mana quartz and let this run. And this is going to make us quartz enriched iron. And we're going to say auto output is enabled. And there we go. It's going to start pumping up. We'll go ahead and lock that in. And now we have quartz enriched iron coming in. So we'll grab what we have um, and we will add some speed upgrades to the sludge production just to make it a bit faster. Um, but over a little bit of time, we're going to have lots of sludge built up, lots of quartz enriched iron, especially when we get all of it plugged up with AE2 and we're automatically making the mana quartz. All right, so back over to the patterns. Uh, blank patterns. Oh yeah, I need to make some basic coils. We're going to go ahead and get six for now. Um, let me grab those out and let me add that to this for the time being until we get our blood magic stuff all plugged up. Okay, so now if we pull up our patterns, we should be able to go ahead and get uh, two of these. So there's that. Uh, and then if we come over and we put these into here and for right now we're going to say uh, processing pattern. We've got our interfaces. Uh, the first thing that we're going to automate, I think, is pink slime ingots. So we're going to say pink slime ingots uh, give us iron. If you send two iron and two gold, we'll pop over and make one of these real quick. So right here. And for input, we can just leave this just enabled because the AE2 system is going to automatically feed it out. Um, oh, I actually had one up here. Um, and then we're going to say that the output, we're going to push it out the bottom. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and just convert this over to just a flat interface and set that up on the bottom of this dissolution chamber. And then we're going to pop down. Let's get uh, over to our recipe and we're going to say that makes a pink slime ingot. And we'll go ahead and just encode that and clear it. And then we can go into our interface terminal. This is our dissolution chamber. And we're going to go ahead and just put in that pink slime there. Uh, so now if we wanted to order pink slime, we've got two in the system. But let's go ahead. Oh, middle click's not the order button. What's the order button? Okay, my pick block is actually, it's also sort target inventory. Let me just change that like that because there's buttons for that I don't really need that uh, so now if we pull up pink slime we click it we can order uh, let's order two we have two in the system let's order two more um, and so if we give this just a moment we should see two more coming in right it does take a second to craft though to be fair so let's just pop up see what's happening it is crafting one here I have to put speed upgrades in this we're going to be automating speed upgrades so that way it'll make it a bit easier for us but yeah here comes the second one and it's crafting that so that's working that's great uh, so next up let me go sleep because it's raining uh, the next thing we'll want to automate is um, I mean there is the pink slime balls uh, but I think I want to automate these, like these machine frames. So let's go ahead. Let's just convert all these ME interfaces over. Uh, let's do the latex one. It's right there. Um, so let's go ahead and put an interface onto that. Uh, and that's going to be our first machine frame. Because I actually hate crafting these things. And I like to go ahead and get this automated. Uh, so the simple machine frame uh, it's two nether bricks two plastic two iron gold gear 
and I'm gonna have to get some cables ran over and get these uh, presses automated as well and that's what's gonna get us our simple machine frame there we go and we can go ahead and just drop that uh, into the interface terminal into this dissolution chamber that doesn't have anything uh, this is gonna be the one that we just plugged up so if we kind of plug these up one at a time uh, we won't have to worry about trying to figure out where it goes because uh, now if we take a look here inside this interface you can see the pattern is safely stored in there uh, and let's go ahead and set up the output to push out the bottom okay and our pink slime should be done so let's just take a quick double check it is there it is perfect okay I had a crash for a little bit that it was kind of like a crash loop due to a rendering issue uh, and it's fixed itself now uh, so I was off the server for a little bit you can see we've built up to 50 buckets of sludge and we have a stack and 18 quartz enriched iron now um, I also went ahead and moved our material stonework factory up here and it is pushing out cobblestone gravel black sand silicon uh, moved a couple other things up here uh, that we're gonna make use of in a in a couple episodes or whatever whenever we get it set up uh, but what we're going to do now is uh, we've actually reached channel limit on this one of course because we only have eight channels and we've got one two three four uh, then we have the storage bus that connects over to the storage so that's five and then if we pop up uh, up here we have six seven and eight right there uh, so that's going to be our limit uh, for this first set of channels, but we're going to use kind of a workaround to give ourselves more channels pre-ME controller, uh, as I mentioned before. So at this point, what we're going to do, we're actually going to cut out, um, I'm going to leave the crafting terminal, but I'm going to cut out the pattern terminal. Do we want to go ahead and, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's cut out the pattern terminal and let's cut out the interface terminal. Of course you can use a Sardis Quartz wrench but I'm actually just going to remove those cables for the time being. We're going to pull this up and we're going to put it in uh, instead just right down here for now. Uh, so that's where the storage, uh, the crafting storage for this one will be. Now I have made another one of those um, at this point. Uh, so what we're going to do, let's grab ourselves a terminal. Just an ME terminal will be fine for this for this one we'll do our crafting in this one I think uh, also I did get this set up and filled out at this point so uh, a couple our a couple of our storage crates are now gone um, at this point all right so what we're going to do to extend out our channels which that's going to give this two more channels which we're going to make use of those in just a second upstairs with those machines but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add you can see I have a line here uh, and this isn't currently plugged up to anything, though it does have an interface on the far side, which we're going to uh, talk about here shortly. But what we're going to do, let's come up, let's bring over our Fluix, and I think what we're going to do is, let's just put down quartz fiber. You can do cable anchor or quartz fiber, it doesn't matter. They both do the same thing except this transmit pa transmits power which we do want to do uh, because this is going to be a subnetwork kind of like our uh, storage subnetwork except uh, this one's going to handle crafting now one thing to bear in mind is when you're using a subnetwork for crafting uh, you can't like for example if I set up crafting on this line I can't order it through this one um, ordering crafts isn't allowed kind of through a subnetwork so just kind of bear that in mind uh, but we got that plugged up and what we're going to do is we're going to interface with the storage line on this so we're going to basically just straight up lose uh, three channels right out the gate because we're going to have our terminal our crafting storage which we'll just put in uh, let's say here for now of course this is all just temporary uh, and these are actually kind of weak crafters but they can hold a lot of data so they're going to be kind of slow but that's okay um, and what we're going to do is this is the storage line that comes out uh, so what we're going to do is put in a storage bus here and interface onto that and then we're gonna run this over now we don't actually have to apply power to it because this line already has power 
and this line already has power uh, so we don't have to worry about that on this one but basically since all of our storage is on a subnetwork every bit of it is on a subnetwork uh, we can access that same subnetwork that we have uh, through this one so you can see all of our items are accessible through this one as well as through this one but this one is just going to be for ordering crafts uh, is all we're going to do with it and we'll go ahead since we're actually not going to have a ton of uh, channels let's see we've got three at the moment four five six seven seven maybe at max uh, let's not use the interface terminal right now but let's use the pattern terminal so we'll go ahead let me clip that off i don't need that one there and we'll put the pattern terminal in there. That way we can make patterns through this. And I have a blank pattern right here. And we can basically just keep doing this uh, as much as we want. Now, one thing that we might do is, because I think the storage right now, this is four, five, six channels. Let's connect, uh, seven channels, because we have uh, over here, we do have that storage bus into another uh, sub-network. So right now we're using seven channels. But if worse comes to worse, if we need to add a couple more crafting subnetworks, uh, then we can just have a subnetwork that then leads into our storage subnetwork. Uh, one that's just nothing but storage bus interface combinations, like eight channels of that. Uh, that's an option as well. Okay, the neighbor was mowing, so I decided to cut for a minute there. I did go ahead and change this to a crafting terminal because why not? Why not? That way we can craft things in here. They're not expensive really at this point. Uh, also, let me go ahead and, oh yeah, I can't order it from this one. I'm going to have to get used to that until we get this changed over. But let me go ahead and order, uh, let's say, 10 pink slime. Okay, now at this point, what we're going to do, since we do have that subnetwork plugged up, uh, let's make ourselves a pattern. I want to teach you how to make gears, iron gears more specifically. And I ran the the cables that are on that subnetwork, like I mentioned, I ran them all the way over to here. And we do have an interface already plugged up. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to set up a recipe for handling our gears. Now, right now, I don't have the interface terminal plugged up. So I'm going to have to kind of manually input a lot of these recipes, but that's not really a big deal for us. Uh, there's an iron gear. I want to go ahead and get this one done because pistons... And we'll just encode that there we go um, and we're gonna have to handle this one just slightly different uh, so we're gonna put this into here now just bear in mind that this one's a little bit different because the stuff runs down and it goes into this chest it doesn't get deposited back into the AE2 system uh, so what we're going to do let's get ourselves some machine frames Drop those into there let's get ourselves a couple interfaces <sighs> my ping is down again it's ridiculous absolutely ridiculous um let's go ahead now and we're going to take convert one of these into a flat interface and this is going to be for our plates and then we're going to convert this one here uh we're going to leave it not convert it but leave it as a full block take our nether quartz wrench right click the back of that so we have that arrow kind of facing in towards this hopper so whenever this stuff gets things um, it's going to send it into this like whenever the AE2 system sends it for a recipe it's going to send it into there we're going to run that cable over like so and we're going to run these cables over like so and then we'll put another interface here that'll be for the uh, the wire the wire and the rods I'm actually not in a big rush to set up recipes for but I will as as, as they come up so I'm still waiting for my new uh, my new internet to get plugged up it's in the works but it's just taking them a little bit for whatever reason there we go there's our other interface that way whenever we're ready when we need them uh, we'll have them all right so now what we're going to do is to actually feed the items that we create back in uh, we're just going to run some cables over and feed the things into the interface okay we're going to put that in like so and then what i'm going to do just to make this a little bit more spiffy and not just have a whole bunch of pipes everywhere uh, we're going to take and set up our chest here. And we're going to say that you can pull from this chest, so then it can just feed the items then into that interface. And we'll put in our dropping conveyor setting there. And then I'm going to need three more conveyors. 
And then what we'll do is we'll just attach these here. So everything's going to feed over onto this conveyor and then it's going to go back uh, to that chest and then be pulled out. Um, not sure. Oh, that's trying to connect to that conveyor. We'll just disconnect that. We don't want anything to go onto that conveyor. Okay. Uh, so now if we come over here and we were to order, let's order like some iron gears. And remember that we'll have to do it through this. Uh, but if we click here, let's say... We want two more of these. There's two, and then here shortly we should get three. There we go. Uh, and that's going to work. Basically, that input is going to work for all of our metal presses. So the one that's making gears, it'll work. The rods, the wires, the plates. As long as the stuff is coming back through on an interface, uh, then it will register the craft as completed. It doesn't have to be the exact same interface, of course. Um, so now, what we're going to do is I've got to add more gears and plates to that specifically uh, like aluminum and stuff because uh, we do use a lot of that but that'll basically be the eight channels on this line so we've got four interfaces terminal terminal crafting storage and then uh, the storage bus but up top we did add two additional channels by removing those two terminals so we're gonna pop up here uh, this dissolution chamber this is kind of a temporary one uh, because we're probably not going to be making any more metallurgic infusers. So I'm going to grab these three, and I'm going to go ahead and just upgrade these into basic infusing factories. And we're going to be automating this just a little bit differently. Okay, so what we're going to do, let's get ourselves, let's pull up XNet here. Let's grab some blue network cables. I've got a controller here. And we're going to go ahead and make ourselves some advanced connectors. Um, I'm going to need... For today, I'm going to need six of these. Okay, and right over here, I've kind of moved things around. So we have our infusing factories and we have our enriching factory. I've got four infusing, one enriching, and then our alloy smelter. And we're going to actually I only need three of these, but that's okay. We're going to put advanced connectors right through here. And we're going to put our controller in right there. And it's got plenty of power and everything. Uh, it's connected up with this blue connector. Great. Um, so now what we're going to do is let's put in a couple chests and this is just going to be for our AE2 system and our XNet system to access and so we're going to put in say one here and one here these will be hidden behind this wall that kind of comes out and then what we'll do is we'll put in a blue connector here uh, so let's run over a few of our network cables and just plug into that take one of our interfaces turn it into a flat one and we're going to keep one as a solid block and then let's take we'll put our flat interface on there and then right here we're going to put our solid interface right there and we'll just hit the back of that with our nether quartz wrench and say you feed over into that and then we're going to take and we're going to add one more connector and this connector is going to set right there. Okay, so now if we pull up our XNAT system, you can see there's a lot of things that are attached to this. Uh, power if we need it, I don't know. Um, but we're going to say, let's name a few of these. We're going to say, we're going to say T Obsidian, comma, B Diamond. And then on this one, we're going to say T redstone B carbon uh, I don't really need to name that one and over here we're going to say uh, T alloy B mech for this okay so top is alloy down is mech so let's go ahead uh, we're gonna set up an item excellent item system here uh, and we're gonna say extract stack uh, 10 is fine and that should be good and then down we're gonna say no I'm sorry not this let's remove that we're gonna on channel 2 we're gonna make another item line we're gonna create and this one is also going to be extract stack and top is our alloys so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down to our alloy smelter and we can add additional alloy smelters as we need 
uh, but we're going to create and we're going to say insert and right here we will add some whitelist stuff later if we add additional alloy smelters but for now we're just going to leave that as default uh, just insert there we go now over here we are going to say uh, we're going to be adding a few filters to this um, and first and foremost let's cover our refined materials uh, so there's a few different refined materials that we are going to be needing um, as well as a few things that aren't refined materials i know we're going to have to eventually add more interfaces to that chest and we will do that but not until we get to i'm sorry not not refined but enriched uh, but not until we get into the ME controller that way I can just run more channels up easier uh, Enriched 10 I know we use for the raw basic processor I had to use them for drawer controllers, but beyond that No uh, So now I'm not gonna worry with that what I am going to do though is I'm gonna come over uh, Let's throw these in And let's teach it how to make enriched gold and for now since we don't have pulverizing plugged up to it I'm probably just gonna dump some gold dust into the us one of those makes enriched gold we'll just encode and encode okay there's our other recipe it's taking forever with this lag I don't I really do not understand how a company can be this bad Okay, so what we're going to do is, right down here, this is our mechanism stuff. We're going to go ahead and add these recipes in. These are for enriched items, which unfortunately takes up most of this, but that's okay. Um, and then we're going to set this up. Our enriching factory, we're going to say that uh, for these, let's go ahead, side config. We'll do top input output. Bottom is going to be extra. And this one's not going to have an extra, so it's just going to be input output from the top. All right, so now what we're going to do is the, let's see, the basic enriching factory. Uh, we're going to say that upside, you can insert refined obsidian dust, gold dust, redstone. Uh, so you can insert these five things. And you're going to be able to extract. This is going to be on line three, Xnet items. Then we're going to say that you can extract stack. And you'll be able to insert your items then into. Oh, I need one more connector. We'll get that to here in just a second. And then on these, we are going to say like top is redstone here. So we're going to say that. Yeah, we'll just say you can insert. And for this one, we're going to say you can insert charged Sardis. Uh, into the top of this and we're gonna make I guess one more channel probably uh, so let's just copy this connector and we're going to make another item line here and we're gonna paste that channel here so we can extract and this one here is the one that's supposed to get redstone so we're gonna say on the bottom side on the downside right here you can insert and you're gonna be able to insert enriched redstone there um, and then let's go ahead. We'll just copy this connection and we'll go through and we'll paste it here Now this one's going to be the one that accepts obsidian. So we're gonna put that in uh, We'll paste it here. This one's gonna be the one that uh, accepts carbon So we'll just put that into there and Then this one is gonna be the one that accepts diamond. So we'll put that into there uh, so this one's all set up. So basically we have an enriching factory for each material. Now we don't really have to have that um, because we're going to be sending with the recipes, we're going to be sp uh, sending specific amounts, but I prefer to generally have um, dedicated enriching factories for kind of dedicated materials. Plus it can keep from things just kind of backing up through bulk orders and stuff like that. And it makes things run faster uh, when you have a lot of different materials that are needed at the same time. So... And let's also go ahead and put this connector in. Uh, we only want it on the downside, really, but specifically not the north side. We'll just run that over. And really quickly in the controller, uh, let's go ahead, channel three here. We're gonna say that you can insert items on channel three. 
Um, and for extraction, let's go ahead and set up the extraction for all of these. It's gonna be something that we can just copy paste down through here, so paste. And we're also gonna go ahead and paste it into the alloy smelter as well. Uh, so all of these can extract and get fed back into the system immediately. Which honestly, I guess at the moment, I could wait on the carbon recipe though. Um, so let's just pull that out for the time being because I'd rather have four slots. And carbon's not something we're gonna be using too much at the moment, so that can really, that can wait. The other ones I'm gonna need. So we're gonna say four osmium and enriched redstone makes four basic control circuits. And we'll re-encode that. And then infused alloy is 10 and steel. So we're gonna say that if you send eight steel and rich redstone, you're gonna get eight infused. Oh yeah, I need to make more patterns. This is taking me way longer to do than it should. So big thank you, Zito, I appreciate all that. I appreciate all that you do. All right, so this is the redstone one. Let's go ahead and whitelist osmium and steel for going into this one. Uh, now this one, uh, this is the bottom diamond top obsidian. Let's go ahead and create there. We're gonna say you can insert and you'll be able to insert um, reinforced alloy. Cause that's gonna be for making the ultimate alloy. This one is the carbon. We're gonna wait to initiate that one. I guess I can go ahead and whitelist it though, but this one here is gonna be diamond. So let's go ahead, turn that one on and diamond, you can accept infused alloy. You can also accept obsidian dust. We'll go ahead and whitelist that in. Uh, and the carbon, so this one, there's iron. So that way if I wanna come up here and I wanna dump some iron and carbon in there, then I can just, it'll automatically make it and dump it back in the system. But the recipe itself, uh, in the same for the refined obsidian, it's not going to be automated just yet. But, uh, and of course the obsidian, I'll then have to dump it into the compressing factory as well. But we'll go ahead and just add these recipes in. And there we go. So we can make all of that stuff from mechanism. That's going to make our lives a whole lot easier. Um, we don't have everything automated that we want, but of course right now we're kind of limited on channels. So we, we have to kind of pick and choose to some degree. Alloys, of course. Uh, just so that we can actually set one of these up real quick. We're going to teach you this recipe here, for example. So silver, tin, glowstone gets us two lumium. So we can just do that. Um, and the alloy smelter, right now, I'm not going to blacklist this. Or white, have, to, have to whitelist this. So what we'll do is on this interface, we'll toss in that recipe. So now we can order lumium. And we're not going to be setting filters for this because anything that goes in this chest already um, cleared out for the alloy smelter. Uh, so if we throw that into there, it's gonna get pulled out. You can see the alloy smelter kicks on. It makes lumium. We can throw speed upgrades in this. I do need to make some of those. Uh, but then that gets pulled out, deposited into there and sent into the system. At this point, we have a lot of our key stuff, that being alloys, plates and gears, mechanism stuff. Um, as well as machine frames, the ones that we actually use a lot of, like for making interfaces and other things. Uh, we do have that stuff automated. So that's gonna make our lives a whole, whole lot easier. And then we can also add additional subnetworks if something comes up that we're going to need a lot of. But realistically, I think that's gonna make our lives um, quite a bit easier. I think steel casings, these aren't gonna be too bad because I can order that, I'll be able to order that and I'll be able to uh, order those. Um, I just need to set up the recipe for the wire. Um, I'll get that. And I actually have a lot of that stuff already built up. Um, the advanced coils, I can order the flux coils more or less. That will be, we'll have steel, we'll be able to set up redstone alloy. Honestly, just having an AE system with storage makes a lot of this easier. I've got enough of those built up. Um, so yeah, making the steel casings that we need to make a reactor at this point, not gonna be too bad. And then once we get our ME controller, we can easily just switch over our current Fluix cable stuff. We can switch that over for a dense cable, get into some P2P, uh, and then quickly, I think, uh, have a fully fledged AE2 system. Um, these are default, that's beautiful. Um, I would like to get the pure stuff automated, but for right now, if I have to throw that in manually, it's not a big deal. Um, I will probably, next time I go to make some of this pure stuff, I'll go ahead and whitelist the uh, enriching factory to allow that. Um, but that's no biggie uh, for the fluid seed. 
course we aren't actually doing any crafting table crafts just yet uh, we will but those are easy enough as long as I can order the processing stuff so I don't have to run over the base uh, those are easy enough to just click in you know I think we're in a good spot so we're gonna wrap up this episode here uh, next episode we are going to be pushing into some mechanism polonium uh, and start setting up for that and that way we can get an emmy controller and we can have a fully fledged IE system uh, instead of just a bunch of little sub networks that we're kind of working from so anyways I hope you guys enjoyed the episode I do apologize about the lag and then I apologize about the mowing I tried to cut out the mowing and I tried to cut out as much of the lag as I could uh, hopefully it'll get better it had just started like I start recording and it's like lag I'm so drained when it comes to internet like it's been such a hassle for the last like couple of years but soon soon it won't be a problem anymore so i'm just waiting for that but anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the episode i'll see you guys next time until then as always do take care stay safe i'll see you guys then